Argentine ants are small ants native to the Parana River drainage in South America and have become a globally widespread and invasive ant. It has now established itself on six continents, including many oceanic islands. Argentine ants do not sting like their South American relative, the fire ant, but they do disrupt ecosystems by replacing native species and they are a nuisance pest for humans by raiding our homes. They are also an agricultural pest to both farmers and gardeners alike, including those of us that keep cactus and succulents. These ants don't directly harm plants, but instead they tend aphids, mealybugs, and scale insects. In return for sweet honeydew secretions from these plant-feeding insects, Argentine ants provide protection from predators and may even move these pests to better food sources to maximize honeydew production. When these pest insects are protected from predators, their numbers increase greatly and can cause significant damage to a cactus and succulent collection. Argentine ants live cooperatively in large colonies consisting of several nests and queens covering a large area. These nests are connected together forming super colonies. A vast Argentine ant super colony in southern Europe was recently found to span 3,700 miles along the Mediterranean coast. The super colony in California starts just north of San Francisco and goes south all the way to San Diego. All the ants in a super colony recognize each other as being from the same family. If you picked up an ant in Southern California and dropped it off in Northern California over 500 miles away, the local ants would recognize this ant as one of their own and accept it into the nest. In their native South American habitat, if Argentine ants from different colonies encounter one another while foraging, they immediately fight to the death. This type of inter-colony aggression among ants is what keeps their populations in check. How the Argentine ant lost this aggression and became such a widespread pest starts when these ants first made it to North America on trade ships carrying coffee and sugar. In the 1890s, these ants were documented in Louisiana, where the ships carrying these goods would port. Just 10 years later, they were seen in Los Angeles in the Bay Area of California. The few ants that made it out of South America passed down their genes and expanded rapidly in their non-native range. This small genetic pool is why ants from far away recognize each other and won't fight like Argentine ants would in their native range. The ability for this ant to cooperate with neighboring colonies is what makes it almost impossible to eradicate. If ants in a particular area run out of resources, both food and information are able to pass through the ant colonies. Also, when ants are eradicated from an area, there are literally billions more just waiting to move in when the conditions allow. Argentine ant colonies are also unique in that they have many reproductive queens. So killing the queen will not kill the colony. Even if you were able to kill all the queens in a given colony, queens from neighboring colonies would simply butt off and take over the queen-free colony. While we will never be able to completely get rid of Argentine ants, their numbers can be kept in check. Reducing their numbers will reduce the protection that pest insects receive and reduce the number of pest insects brought into your garden and potted plants. Here are a few organic methods I found to help control Argentine ants. Diatomaceous earth is a naturally occurring, soft, sedimentary rock that has been ground down to a fine white powder. This powder damages the exoskeleton of insects, so it acts as a barrier that Argentine ants won't cross. If you have potted plants on a shelf, you can put a small amount of diatomaceous earth down by the legs of the shelf, preventing ants from getting up onto the plants. These barriers can be put virtually anywhere, both inside and out. While diatomaceous earth is safe for humans to handle and to even eat, it does create a fine dust that should not be inhaled. Boric acid is a type of acid found in many naturally occurring minerals, such as borax. Borax is found in many cleaning products, including some types of toothpaste. Boric acid has a very low toxicity level for mammals, but not for ants. It interferes with their digestive system and slowly terminates them. The trick is to keep the concentration of boric acid low enough 
so that it travels through the colony and makes it to the queens and young before killing the ants. The Taro brand of liquid ant baits contains borax and I found it effective against Argentine ants. You can also find recipes online to make your own bait at home using borax. Argentine ants, like other ants, communicate with each other using pheromones. A forager that finds food marks a trail on the way back to the colony. This scent trail is followed by other ants, and these ants then reinforce the trail when they head back to the colony with food. Pheromones also help ants tell each other apart, warn each other of danger, and communicate all sorts of messages we're only beginning to understand. Most essential oils have a very strong fragrance. We can use this strong fragrance to mask pheromone trails and to disrupt the coordination of ants. Essential oils can be added to soapy water that can be used to clean pots and shelves where we keep our cacti and succulents. This will mask any previous messages ants left behind to tell other ants, hey, this is a good place to find food, water, or shelter. My favorite essential oils to use for ants are peppermint, cedarwood, and clove. Argentine ants are attracted to moisture and would not be able to live in most of the regions they are found if it wasn't for the water provided to them by us humans. If you have any high water use landscaping, such as a lawn, you may consider replacing it with xeriscaping so that Argentine ants will not be attracted to your property. If you have any trees on your property that you have noticed Argentine ants crawling up, they are likely feeding from their honeydew producing insects in the treetops. You can prevent the Argentine ants from crawling up trees by wrapping sticky paper around the trunk of the tree, effectively cutting them off from their food source. Lastly, if you have debris in your yard, such as wood piles, these can serve as nesting areas for Argentine ants. Argentine ants don't dig tunnels within the earth like many other ants do, but instead find cracks, crevices, and holes to pack themselves into. Removing all the potential nesting areas will force the ants to look elsewhere to live. A range of pests attack both cacti and succulents in cultivation. Mealybugs and scale insects, which both feed on the sap of plants, are a particular problem. In areas where the Argentine ant is active, the problems caused by these pest insects will amplify, and therefore ant control will become an essential part of pest management of a cactus and succulent collection. While it seems like the Argentine ants are here to stay for the foreseeable future, you can use the tips shared in this video to keep them under control and off of your cactus and succulents. If you found the tips helpful in this video, give it a like, and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.